So what I want to do is I want to talk about this fairly surprisingly controversial subject of the people of Israel. Um, not necessarily the citizens of the current Jewish state of Israel, but when the Bible talks about Israel, who is it talking about? And what does that mean for us? And I think this is one of these concepts, there's probably just a handful of concepts in Scripture, that once you understand them, it changes the way you read the entire Bible. You can read the entire Bible cover to cover, over and over and over again, and if you don't understand this, you'll read it in a completely different way. But once you do understand it, it's transformative. It changes every aspect of your life. You start to realize who God is speaking to when. You start to connect all the dots. You start realizing what actually does apply to you and what doesn't. And what it really gets into is the issue of identity. And I think for, for us as believers, we've, we talk a lot about our identity in Messiah, our identity in Yeshua. But what is that? Does it just mean that we're Christians? Does it just mean that we're disciples of the Lord? Does it just mean, like, what does it mean? How does God view us? And how has God viewed his people throughout the course of history? So that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. Cases that the lost sheep of the house of Israel that we read about throughout scripture are both Jews and non-Jews. It's not just the Jewish people. It's not just the Jewish people 2,000 years ago. A partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. So Paul is saying that the reason why these Gentiles are being grafted in, the reason why this is possible, the reason why this whole mystery, this plan is being executed, is because of the fullness of the Gentiles. And who was described as being the fullness of the Gentiles? It was the tribe of Ephraim. And so what Paul is saying is that until Ephraim comes in, Israel's not going to be restored. The reason why Gentiles are being brought to faith is because God is restoring Ephraim, the lost tribe, the northern kingdoms. And so the key thing is to remember that faith is what makes us Israel. A lot of people get really anxious and antsy when you start talking about Israel and these sorts of things. They get very sensitive about it. I don't know why. The Bible's pretty clear about it. Um, faith is what makes us Israel. Scripture says that he's going to have a new covenant with the house of Israel. If we're new covenant believers, we have to be part of Israel. If you're Israel, you're Israel. And we all get there through faith. Just as it has always been for God's people. Abraham believed through faith. Isaac, Jacob, the tribes of Israel, they all got there through faith continuum. The legacy of faith that we are walking in today stretches right back to Abraham. The promises are still true. The promises are still valid. The things that we have to look forward to, our obligations are still real. Salvation has only ever come through faith. Being part of God's people has only ever come through faith. It has absolutely nothing to do with your bloodline. Every Jewish person, the Jews have debated for thousands of years, what does it mean to be a Jew? They accept it on faith. They admit that like, they're readily open about the fact that they take it on faith. That we are part of this plan. In Galatians 3.29 it says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Whether that's spiritual or physical, I don't care. It's real. We are Abraham's seed. We are heirs according to the promise. And so where are we today? This is always the question we've got to ask ourselves. So all that's fine and good. Now we're going to understand that on, on whatever level the Father wants to operate, he views us as Israel. Fully. Not stepchildren. We're Israel. Just as everyone else who is God's people are Israel. So where are we today? And I think we're seeing prophecy fulfilled. Partly in our realization of our own identity. Why are so many Christians starting to wake up to the feasts? Why are they keeping, you know, these historically things that people thought of as Jewish? Why? It's not because we want to be Jewish. I can't become Jewish. But I am realizing that I'm part of Israel. The ten lost tribes, if you will, the northern kingdom that were carried off by Assyria, and this is common in all Jewish folklore and history and they, the Jews, even to this day, every day, pray for the lost tribes of Israel. 
the Jewish people readily accept that there was a significant portion of what were the brothers who have been scattered into the four corners of the earth. The only people who don't like that theory are a couple of, or a bunch of Christians. <laughs> because it might imply that we have some obligations. It might imply that maybe God's people, maybe we can't just dismiss the Jews as God's people. The Jews have the commandments of God. Maybe it applies to us as well. You're seeing this awakening. You're seeing these dry bones coming back to life. Whether it's in the Jewish people or within the church. You're seeing these two groups of people who worship the same God. Rising up and finally, for the first time in history, beginning to reconcile. And it doesn't come without its animosity. There's always friction. But it's happening, and this is a unique moment for us in history. You wouldn't have had this many Christians. I mean, there's more Christians worldwide that celebrate Passover now than there are Jews. Which is crazy, because if you look on Wikipedia, it's still a Jewish holiday. We have to understand that when God is making promises throughout Scripture, when there are promises and commandments and gifts and instructions and blessings and curses and all of these things that are given to his people Israel as a perpetual covenant, those are things that apply to us, or should apply to us. We have to understand that our reconciliation to the Father is incumbent on our identity and our role in the people of God. He made a new covenant with the house of Israel. He didn't make a new covenant with the Tennesseans. If we want to be new covenant believers, we have to be part of that. He is the king of Israel. If we're not Israel, he's not our king. I mean, it's very basic stuff. He has a covenant with Israel. He sanctifies Israel. It says that he will dwell with Israel. He will be in a relationship with Israel. That's what we want. <laughs> That's what we know is true for our lives. So don't ever let anybody talk you out of the fact that, or diminish you or treat you as a second-class citizen on some sort of notion about who is and who is not Israel. All of God's people are Israel. Fully and equally. It takes nothing away from someone else if Dr. Lee is also Israel. It said that Ephraim would be scattered into every nation, tribe, and tongue. The people of Israel look like every single type of person on earth. It's actually mathematically possible that you could actually, that literally every person on earth could actually be a descendant of Abraham. Mathematically, that's possible. Whether or not that is, doesn't matter to me. It's up to God. But in the meantime, we have a mission to go out and tell everybody to invite them into the kingdom. And when we believe that our identity is separate from that of Israel, when we let other people tell us that we are not Israel, we are separating ourselves from the commandments and the covenants with God. If you're going to tell me that I cannot be Israel, that I am not Israel, that door is what was never open for me, then you're saying that I can't be part of the new covenant. You're saying that I cannot be part of the kingdom of God. You're saying I can't enter into the new Jerusalem. All of these things that even believers, I think most believers, know to be true is under attack when we adopt that, or when we even encourage it ourselves. This idea of a separation between the Jews and the Gentiles, the, the church and the, and the Jewish people. We're all Israel, if we have faith in the Lord. More and more of God's people are realizing that this is for them. That God's commandments, God's promises, God's covenants are for them. And we need to be there to extend the open arms, the hospitality of Abraham, to invite them in to say, yes, you can be part of God's kingdom. There is a way in. It's through Yeshua. And through the faith that we have in Christ Jesus, we become fully part of his promises. That is our hope. That is our confidence. That is our identity. And that's the identity that will change the world.